I've been running these pictures, and now all of a sudden I gotta be an actor. I once had a vision of heaven. I knew a taxi driver that ever went straight where I told him to. Next time you say that, smile. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what are you afraid of? Remember, you're a head man here. Say, that's right, I am. Here, Jeeves, who are you? U.S. Secret Service, 25266. What number? 25266. Holy smoke, I've been drafted. do that. He's working for the theater. The management won't let him do it. What's the matter? Are you crazy or something? He'll do it for us. I got him the job. That's Cousin Louie. Touch every time I see I get hot and cold at the same time. Give me your lips when you touch. I will not. Louie! Louie! Rewind the film! Oh, come on. Louie! We've been keeping steady company now for two days, haven't we? Hey, Louie! 
Don't go away. Rewind this film, will you? What's the matter with you guys? Don't you know you can't talk to me and the audience? Well, we're doing it, aren't we? Yes, folks. <laughs> this is hell's a problem. <laughs> Come on, Louie, make it snappy. This is screwy. The actor's out there talking to me up here. <laughs> Okay, Louie. Who is that? Give him the words. Get away! Last chance first, second honeymoon third. Henry the eighth floor, Dan the Connor Copper, 87 three quarters, down a point. Let me go! I can't stand it! I can't stand it! I can't stand it any longer! You can't stand what? This! <laughs> Save the steam, save the flame. This is impossible. What's the matter? We can't shoot this kind of stuff. Why not? This is hell's a poppin'. <laughs> Chickens, horses, tic tac toe. Pictures are different. You're gonna have a story. Story. <laughs> Crazy. Come on. Just a minute, please. Here, Just here. a minute. Pardon me. May I please have your autograph? You know, you're my favorite actors. Oscar always takes me to see your pictures. We just adore them. Well, thank you. Who are they? Why, Olson and Johnson. Olson. Olson and Johnson? Oscar! Now listen, fellas, we gotta have a story, a love story. Why? Why, I'll tell you why, because we gotta have one, because every picture has one. Hey! Just a minute. Take it easy, bud. Who is he? My bodyguard. Take it easy. Ooh. Telephone for Mr. Olson. Hello? Who? The chambermaid. It's for you. Hello? Yeah? That's bad. That's good. That's good. That's bad. Hey. That's good. Hey. That's good. Hey. That's bad. Hey, what are you doing? That one? What are you doing? I'm helping her sort a box of strawberries. Mrs. Jones! Mrs. Jones! Uh, what do you want? I've got to deliver this plant to Mrs. Jones. Mrs. Jones! Look here, my friend. We're making a motion picture here. That's a matter of opinion. Mrs. Jones! Holy chick, Mrs. listen. Jones. We've had a writer working on a love story. Won't you at least talk to him? Come on. You can't tell me you have to have a love story. Would I give you a bump, steer? Oscar! Hey, I've been a director for 15 years and I never did a picture without a story. There never has been a picture without a story. There never will be a picture without a story. Gentlemen, huh? gentlemen, may I take your picture? What? May I take your picture? Sure. Go ahead. Oh, thanks! Oh, <laughs> Boys, put your careers in the palm of my hand. Oscar! Oscar! Will someone stop that woman from yelling Oscar? Oscar! Will someone please stop that woman from yelling Oscar? Oscar! Thank you. Thank you very much. Boys, I'll mold you into great art. You don't have to mold us. We're very happy the way we are. Yeah, we think we look fine. Give us a chance and we'll make you the best director. I am the best director. Now, wait a minute. I thought they burnt that. All right, Selby. Up on your feet. This is Mr. Olson and Mr. Johnson. How are you, Selby? I didn't hear your first name. Harry. What? Harry. Well, you've got to speak louder. I can't hear you. Harry! Uh, yes, he's a little weak. The doctor's got him on a soup diet. Soup diet? Yes, he told me to eat three plates a day. Three plates a day? Ha! You ought to be feeling swell. <laughs> Now, look, Selby, you seem like a bright young man. How old are you? 23. 23? Well, that's a patriotic age. Uncle Sam needs young men like you. I presume you're ambitious? Oh, yes. That's fine. What would you like to be? 29. Say, fella, how much would you charge to haunt a house? How many rooms? OK, boys, OK, no more interruptions. Mrs. Jones! Mrs. Jones! Mrs. Jones! Oscar! Oscar! How much longer do I have to put up with this? Until we finish this picture. How long? Until we finish this picture. Oh, no! Okay, send for another cameraman. All right, boys, grab a couple of chairs and sit down. I'm going to tell you this story if I have to hire people to listen. It's a picture about a picture about Hell's a Poppin'. It's a great script. Feel how much it weighs. Listen, buddy. For three years, we did Hell's a Poppin' on Broadway, and that's the way we want it on the screen. This is Hollywood. We change everything here. We got to. Why? 
Listen to the story. It's all about a young fellow named Woody Tyler. That's Woody Tyler. He's very rich. Wait till he pays his income tax. Now, Woody's in love with Kitty Rand. That's Kitty Rand, also very rich. Well, that solves everything. Ah, that's what everyone thinks. But does she love Woody? No. Right. Great story, mine. Whom does she love? Oscar! Oscar, yes. No! She's in love with your playwright friend, Jeff. That's Jeff. Hi, Jeff. Hi, Oli. Does Jeff love Kitty? Now, our story starts at Kitty Rand's home on Long Island. Come over here, I'll show you a picture of it. Here's a picture of the Rand estate, where our story takes place. Snazzy looking joint, isn't it? There's a long line of limousines. Oh, a funeral, huh? No, no, it's the guests arriving. For the weekend party, Kitty's arranged the Red Cross benefit. That's a nice idea. No, it's a plot to keep Jeff near her. That's why they're putting on a show. Not another picture with a show in it, please. This one's important. Jeff's been trying to sell it to a Broadway producer for months. How can you stage a show right here on the grass? Oh, no, not on the grass. In our big outdoor theater back of the greenhouse. We Rands are disgustingly rich. But why a theater? Oh, I've wanted to be an actress ever since I was knee-high to a footlight. Yes, and she's got a beautiful voice, too. Thanks. You're welcome. Nice-looking couple. Why doesn't Jeff marry her? He doesn't want to marry for money. Huh? He isn't giving in to love until he makes good on his own. That's movies. That's crazy. That's movies. Who are they? Flipper McGee and Molly. No, they're Kitty's parents. They know Kitty's kind of stuck on Jeff, and they don't like it. They want her to marry Woody. Where is this mug Woody? Let's follow Kitty's parents and find out. No, he's not here. Let's look on the terrace. You look on the terrace. We'll stay right here. Ah, uh, there's our man. So you took us away from her to meet him? Hey, Woody, get up. Get up, Woody. Come on, Woody. Get up there. Come on, Woody, get up. Kitty's looking for you. She's on the terrace. You'd better get over there before your pal Jeff steals it away. <laughs> there he goes. Now, see, Kitty wants to get rid of him. She's asking him to take up that suitcase. That's just a stall. Jeff's offering to take it up, huh? Yeah, determined to leave the road clear for his friend Woody. Oh, Jeff. Hey, Jeff. Can't you hear us, Jeff? Let the big dope take the suitcase. You're not the butler. You know the girl loves you. Now, don't do she it, wants Jeff. You to don't take the do suitcase. it. Don't, there. don't be a fool, Jeff. Don't do it, Jeff. Jeff. I'm telling you, don't. You don't. Oh, oh, Jeff. Glad to see me, Kitty. What do you think? Now, here comes a guest you may recognize. Prince Peppy. Prince Peppy? That's Misha Hour. He looks like a phony. Right, he is a phony, a chiseler. He hasn't a penny in his pocket. Try the inside pocket. <laughs> they know he's a phony, but they don't mind. They think he's cute. Now, watch this. You see, he's going to flip the driver for it. You know who's going to win. See, what did I tell you? Why, the cheap four-flusher. What's that load of junk? Those are the properties for Jeff's show. Who are those two silly-looking... Hey, wait a minute. How did we get to Long Island? Now, you're two prop men who live in the same boarding house as Jeff. You're helping him put on the show. Who's driving? You'll find out in a minute, and will you be sorry you asked? Say, isn't there any sound in this picture? Sure, listen. <laughs> It's Chicken Ole. I knew I could count on them. Say, they're really your pals, aren't they? They sure are. Hiya, boy. <laughs> Hiya, Jeff. Hi, Kitty. Look at all the stuff we got. With a few bucks I gave you, certainly. Here's your money back. We kind of borrow the stuff temporarily like. I get it. Yoo-hoo! Oh, don't tell me you brought her. Oh, the kid sister's all right. She won't make any trouble this time. I'll make sure. Hello, Betty. Hi, Jeff. Hey, did you get a gather of those good-looking He-Men around here? I don't need to look any further. Are you kidding? That's not for me. I go in for mass production. Now, wait a minute. Do you remember what happened at the last party? Oh, can I help the animal in me? Come on, Betty. I'll show you the theater and the swimming pool. Just show me the men. I'll I live from there on. Uh-uh. It really isn't stealing, Lily, if we take it back. Hey, look here, you. If it's not asking too much, would you mind getting this truck off of my lawn? Truck off of the lawn? Sure. Hold this. Yeah. What do you want to do, belt that? Put it in the shade. Yeah. Right over there. Side. Pardon me, ma'am. Scene 10, Sculptor Studio. Right there. Hey, Shorty. Hold these. Hey, 
Okay, Shorty, take this. Okay, Shorty. Scene 15, blue number. There. Oh, pardon me. Police, that's what I need. There. You don't want the police, you want me. Why do I want you? Master of disguises. Mysterious. Watch. I've seen enough. How do you like it? Stupendous. Say, who are you, anyway? Private detective, my card here. <laughs> my card here. Crimes committed. I mean to solve while you wait. Well, are you sure you can cope with the situation? Oh, yeah, Levi. Just as smooth as ice. Everything will be grand. All right. See that nothing happens to spoil the pleasure of our guests. And above all, see that nothing happens to the show tomorrow night. Kitty's got her heart set on making a huge success of it. Hey, hey, hey. You got your ice cube. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah. It's a funny habit, carrying ice cubes around in your pocket. Oh, hello. Have we met before someplace? <laughs> Face looks kind of familiar. E. More coffee? Your Highness! Get up, you fool. Hurry up, get up. You want they should find out I'm not a phony? But you I But if they find out I'm not a phony, they are no longer amused. No longer amused, they are no longer interested. No longer interest, no longer money. No longer money, I'm just like you, Count Alexander Alexandrovich Alexandrovsky, a poor slob. Look, Betty, how would you like to meet a real, honest-to-goodness nobleman? You mean one of those hand kissers? Oh, no, that's not for me. Oh, but that's just a preliminary. He's got titles up to here. Well, just so they reach around me, that's all I care about. There he is now. Well, Jeff. Yeah? Not that I'm a fortune hunter or anything, but I understand there's a lot of wealthy heiresses on the loose here today. You know, uh, girls with beautiful figures in the bank. <laughs> well, they tell me Gloria Van Dearborn's looking for a new title. Now, would you be kind enough to locate her and introduce me? You see, I'm in the mood to make rich girls happy. Sure. Here, you came with those people that gave me that eyes, now give it back to them. Kitty, I want to speak to you, alone. <laughs> oh, there's Gloria now. Point her out to me. It's not proper to point, Peppy. She's the girl loaded down with the ice. The girl with all the ice, huh? That's right. Ah, oh, well, what I have to do for money. You look lovely today with your eyes. You know me? Everyone knows you but me. Oh. Can't we go somewhere and talk? Gee whiz. At last. Someone who wants to talk first. <laughs> Shall we step in there? Shall we? Oh, boy! Cozy, isn't it? I kiss your hand, madame. Oh, well, well, we just did that. Remember, I have a face, too. Ah, even to Van Dearborn, I am fascinating. <laughs> Say, what is this Van Dearborn business? You are not Gloria Van Dearborn. Are you kidding? 198th Street in the Bronx, that's me. No, yes, yes, yes. no, 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 See a Volga Bovin go by here? Did he have an outboard motor on him? That's right. What outboard motor? No, he's tall, dark, and handsome, and I think he's gonna be in love with me. Says so in my palm. Oh, that's an ant. 
Farm, one tuba. Hey, buddy, bring me a pitcher of ice water and a menu. <laughs> oh, boy, we've got everything but the kitchen sink. One sink. Did you bring the moon? Moon. Snow. Snow. One canary. <laughs> hey, where's the canary? In the cat. Let's see, act one, scene two. On the table is King Tut's skull. Did you get King Tut's skull? There. Check. What's that? It's King Tut when he was a little boy. Check. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen of the radio audience. How do you do? How do you do? Are you bothered with corns and bunions? Oh, yes, a lot. Very, very, very badly. <laughs> Thanks for asking me, anyhow. I'll call the police if you don't stop following me. Who, me? <laughs> Oh, brother, you better see your dentist at least twice a year. My nobleman! Say, you! Hey, what's going on here? I thought you was going to put a stop to all this madness. A finger never fails. I'll be seeing you. Hey, what's this? I made it for Woody, Act Three, when they make him a knight. I know, but what are these for? Coat of arms. Come on, let's check the wardrobe for the garden party number. Okay. Lady De Troop? Check. Lady Vandermeer? Check. Lady Wintergarden? No, you gotta get a white dress for Lady Wintergarden. <laughs> Check. Put it in the closet. Hey, Ollie, is that kitty a pal? Hey, no! Why don't you put your head up when the red light was on? You know, this is our room. There ought to be a cover on this corner. Sabotage! Look. He's dressed just like us. Yeah. What are you doing in my closet? Your closet, our closet. This is my room and those are my clothes. This is our room and those are our props. Start we smay it to get out of those smocks. Take them off, you imbeciles. Look, Rasputin, Shorty the butler gave us this room. So don't you think you're making a mistake? Bah! Hereafter, I'll answer my own questions. Let's talk this thing over quietly.
flight? If you please. There we are. Set it down like that. isn't it? Count Alexander Alexandrovich Alexandrovsky, you may consider yourself a Grand Duke. See, did you see a tall man without any... <laughs> what a place. Hey! You know what you're doing? Of course I know what I'm doing. I'm just friend of the <laughs> mm -hmm. Not me. It's hard luck to walk on a ladder. <laughs> oh, my era. <laughs> Songs bloom on the windowsills. It's heaven for two. There's a picket fence of moonlight bars and a shingle roof of April stars and shelves of spring in crystal jars. It's heaven for two. There's a first and second mortgage of a million moonbeams. But we could pay it off in no time with our very best dreams. There's a rainbow rug upon the floor and a horseshoe moon above the door. The only thing it needs is you, my heaven, for two. There's a cottage hidden in the hills By a waterfall where stardust spills And songs bloom on the windowsills It's heaven for two Hey, Stinky, will you go on home? Stinky, will you go home? That's a good boy. Go on home and get yourself sick on spinach. <laughs> All right, go ahead with the song. There's a picket fence of moonlight bars And a shingle roof of April stars And shells of spring in crystal jars It's heaven for two. There's a first and second mortgage of a million But we could pay it off in no time with our very best dreams. There's a rainbow rug upon the floor and the horseshoe moon above the door the, the only thing, thing it needs 
Jeff, tell us to get for scene four, arrows or sparrows? I don't know, we can get both. when you hire relatives. Louie! Oh, yeah? You can't talk that way to me and get away with it. Act this, huh? I'll get even with you guys. I'll think of something. Oh, if I can only give my Mickey. Oh. Louie! Well, let me alone, I'm thinking. Well, I'll leave you two here. Aren't you coming with us? No, thanks. I've got to do some work in the first act. See you later. Hi, Jeff. What's the matter, kid? You love the girl, the girl loves you, she's got all the money in the world, and you want to brush her off. I know what it is. You don't want to cut in on your pal, isn't that it? Woody's been too swell a friend. I wouldn't hurt him for anything in the world. Well, let's get after those arrows. Everybody watch me. I was the William Tell of Brasgovnia. Hey! <laughs> Come, let us go to the pool. Shot her in the air, fell to earth, I know not where. Oh. oh, now I know. There ought to be something we could do for Jeff. Maybe we could put Woody into that house. Ah, opportunity knocks. More over here, only. Need any help? We've got a big problem. Worth thinking. That won't help. You see, we're trying to fix up things for Jeff and Kitty. Oh, trying to get rid of Woody, huh? That's right. Well, deal me in. Have you got any ideas? Let me think. Maybe we can talk Woody into giving Kitty the brush off. I know, but how? Well, I remember why my boyfriend gave me the brush off. Kitty's not that kind of a girl. If we can make Woody believe that Kitty ain't the kind of a girl he thinks she is, he might take a powder. Mm-hmm. I... I think you got something there. Yeah, but how will we do it? Yeah. We'll corner Woody at the dance tonight. When we get through them, you think Kitty's a female bluebeard. Okay. <laughs> it's a mean trick. But we're doing it for our pal Jeff. Are you with us, kid? To the death. Help! All right, girls. I smile. Remember, you're having a good time. All right, watch the birdie. Uh -oh. Young lady, would you mind sitting over in that chair? I think. Oh, that's fine. Now, hold it. Still. And what I mean is, don't move. All right, watch the birdie. Thank you. Bread, please. Two slices? I said bread. Bread. That's enough? What do you mean, that's enough? You're back to two slices. It's been a great opportunity for me to come up here and take your pictures, and I hope your show is a success. I really do. Well, goodbye, girls. Well, hello, big boy, what's cooking? Would you like to get your picture token? There may be a movie, a contract in it. Well, come on, Jack, it'll only take a minute. Watch the birdie, we'll take a can of camera shot. Watch the birdie, come on and give it all you've got. Watch the birdie, just look around and pick a spot and hold it. Watch the birdie, just track a funny pose a while. Watch the birdie, or you can beat that pose a mile. Watch the birdie, now let me see a pretty spot and hold it. We're looking for a tall, dark, handsome man with eyes of blue, a golden tan, and strong white teeth like Joan McClay. Hey, you, will you get out of the way? Watch the birdie, we'll take a can of camera shot. Watch the birdie. Come on and give it all you got. Watch the birdie. Just look around and pick a spot and hold it. Zooday. Watch the birdie. 
Watch the birdie. We'll take a can of camel shot. Watch the birdie. Come on and give it all you got. But watch the birdie. Just move around and pick a spot. And hold it. Zoot it. Hold it. on it. Watch the birdie. Just like a funny pose of one. Watch the birdie. Oh, you can beat that pose of mine. But watch the birdie. Now let me see a pretty spot. Hold it. Woody wants mother and dad to announce our engagement tonight. Well, that's, that's swell. Woody's a great guy. I give up. We gotta go to work on Woody right away. You tell him. All right, dance me over. Okay. Did anyone ever tell you you dance like Ginger Rogers? No. No wonder. <laughs> I suppose your dad told you my plan. It's a perfect night for it. What do you say? Oh, well, Woody, I... <laughs> Look, I want to tell you something for your own good. You... Muji! Oh. Why are you Kazatsky dancing tea guzzler? I had a... I... Hello. Oh. Did anyone ever tell you you dance just like... She messed it up. We'll have to tell him ourselves. Come on, Let's go. let's go. I have asked 
Martha, but she wouldn't give me an answer. Well, take her out to some quiet corner and make her give you an answer. And do it now. But, Mr. Wren, I... Just the fellow we've been looking for. Come with us. What's this all about? Just a minute. We'll, we'll find out. I'll tell you. It's just like let this. Let me tell him. No, I'll tell him. Will you let me handle Look, this? boys, I'm busy. Are you more interested in that picture or in me? I've wasted all day up here with you. Them mugs annoying me. They're sticking their nose into somebody else's business again. And so am I. I could have had a good date this afternoon. Leave it alone. You want to mix it all up? Leave it alone. What are you doing? What are you doing? Are you wacky? Oh. Oh, if you weren't wearing glasses, would I fix you up? Glasses! Cut it out. Glasses! Please! Oh, I'll get you! Oh, I'll get you! Glasses! Cut it out! Hal? Just a moment, Woody. We're having a little trouble with this film. That Louie again. Hey, Louie, will you keep your mind on your work? Will you get away from this? Oh! Don't tell me what to do! Watch Oh, boy, I'm, I'm getting a little seasick. So am I. Hey, maybe we can handle this ourselves. Give me a hand here. Up. Uh, 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 that's it. I didn't spin it. Oh! Where's Chick? Hey, how did you get up there? How did you get down there? Come on, Woody. Here we go again. Be careful, will you? Look out for my head. You're hurting me. Be careful. Cut it out, will you? Hey, you know there's a show going on down here. We're trying our best to get your name. You ever had a million? Hey, get that blonde out of there and concentrate on your business. A terrible way to make a living. Louie, you dope. Hey, Woody, how did we get out of this? I don't know. It never happened to me before. Louie, you crazy. Louie, be careful. Shut up! Number one machine, Indian time. That one, number two machine here. What is it? What do you got going on? This is no longer in the state. You. This is not hell's a poppin'. Holy Look what you Those horses don't know what they're doing. Look at that big dope. Louie, will you take those phony Hollywood Indians off the screen? Yeah, get them off of there. Oh, oh, I can't we've stand had enough of this. Get off. Get off. That's better. Now put on our picture. Come on, come on. That's it. Where are we? Over further. There we are. Hold it. Relatives. I'd have that halfwit fired if he wasn't your cousin. My cousin? I thought he was your cousin. He said well, that's that... what he told me. Oh, he did, did he? Hey, you guys gonna stand out there all day? Oh, a wise guy, huh? Listen, you big chump, lay off of this little chump. Who's a little chump? You're a barrel-wasted weasel. That's different. Let's go. Just wait till this picture's over. Look, I've wasted enough time. Oh, oh wait yeah. a minute. Now look. I thought I was gonna tell him. All right, you tell him. Well, you've been mighty swell, Lewis, and to show you we appreciate it, we're gonna give you a little tip. You're much too nice a guy to be mixed up with that kitty ram. What do you mean? Well, maybe you better tell him after all. Oh, no, go right ahead. Come on, out with it. Oh, it's nothing, and she... Maybe she don't know what's wrong. So that's it. Well, who is the guy? Will you tell him? No, keep right on. You're doing fine. Wait a minute. It's... It's... It's the prince, the phony. Peppy, Peppy. That's telling him. Which way does it go? That, that away. Maybe you don't realize it, Peppy, but it's true. And that's why I want you to stay away from Kitty. And stop eating those sandwiches. Maybe you do hold some attraction for her, but if you do, I'm sure it's not the real thing. You mean to say I hold some attraction for her? Well, what else can it be? And you say it's not the real thing? Well, of course not. Remember now, stay away from her. Oh, sure, 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 sure.
fountain and you there. I climb to the top of a mountain and you If I didn't know. Let me go, will you? Let me go. What for? What for? That phony Russian's up there trying to make love to my girl. Who is it? It is I, me, Pepe. Katsusha, why have you waited for so long? Waited? What you should have mean? known it is futile to struggle against fate. Struggle against what? Ah, my little dove, let me embrace you. Oh, Pepe. I've hungered for Pepe. you so. Do not pretend, now, Pepe, Katusha. Now, stop. Tonight now, is Pepe. ours, and it shall live forever because you're a woman and I'm a man. A man and a woman. <laughs> Look, Pepe, I'm warning you. Get out of here. Ah, oh, my little potato. Katsushinka, I hate you. So, oh, thank you very I'm much. Sure kind of dark in here. Ooh. My little turnip, ochi chorne, my two little guitars. I love such passion together. I will make beautiful music. What's the matter? Pepe's in my room. I think he's gone love crazy or something. Oh, let me at him. You stay here, where you'll be safe. Katusha! Magic! Do. Don't ask me how I do it, folks. <laughs> oh, hello. Can I help? Certainly you can, certainly you can. Make them fall in love with you. Make everybody happy. You and you and you. Woohoo, and you. Hello, Mom, I'll be home for supper. Have meat. <laughs> Say, better put that violin on a diet. What about this love thing, you, you kids? What about it? Uh, well, the, uh, <laughs> the porter's delivering the instruments. I better find chicken only I'll see it at rehearsal. Would you know anything about love? Who, me? Oh, not me. I'm a married man.
Hey, Pops, keep that beat a beat. I feel a rhythmic brainstorm coming on. One, two, keep that rhythm heating. One more riff like that and I'll be gone. Oh, man, don't stop now, we're jumping. Give everything to Lord now. This thing might turn into something. I'm mistaken, here comes something now. Get out the station, pick up those wardrobe trunks, will you? Okay. Hey, Woody. Why the suitcases? I'm going somewhere to try to reconstruct my life. Hey, wait a minute. Come on, tell Jeff all about it. What's on your mind? It's Kitty and me. I'm not the man for her, Jeff. She needs someone like you. Someone taller than she is. Mentally. I found out there's someone else. I've just told her we're through. You're... Th it's my fault, Woody. I'm sorry. I tried not to fall in love with Kitty, but, well, I did. You love Kitty? Well, that's wonderful. She needs you. You can save her from herself. Save her from herself? Well, you know, a young girl, ideas about romance. I better tell you about Peppy. You mean about Peppy and Kitty? <laughs> she told me all about it. You don't mind? Of course not. Maybe I'm a bit old-fashioned. Kitty! Kitty, uh, would you mind stepping into my private office? I get it. Guess who? Ah! Watch me. I was the Daniel Boone of Brasgovnia. Goes that tire again. I heard a bang, but I didn't hear any. Hi, Peppy. Good morning. Load her up. That time, pull. What are you doing behind that bush? 
trying to reconstruct my life. What needs reconstructing? Oh, everything. Thanks to you, I found out about Kitty in time. You, you did? did? I mean, uh, you did? Yeah. Ah, uh, don't worry about that, Woody. Now what do you think's happened? Jeff's gone and fallen for her. No. That's terrible. I tried to tell him about Peppy, but he wouldn't listen. He's uh, just... Oh, no use trying to tell Jeff about anything. No, it's his own life. Let him ruin it himself. Ready. <laughs> Wrong gun. When you first told me about Kitty, I figured it was kind of exaggerated that I might be able to stop it. But after what I saw last night... Thanks again, fellas. Last hey, night. hold on! What happened last night? He didn't leave a room till almost 4 o'clock this morning. Who? Peppy, of course. Chick, did I hear right? That gag we pulled, it... It, 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 it ain't it. a gag, it's the truth. That nice, sweet, innocent girl. That nice, sweet, innocent girl is just a... There's still a haze off, as sweaters or no sweaters. She's worse than that. What a fine mess we put our pal Jeff in. We gotta break that up right now. Let's see, music, scenery, wardrobe. Oh, yes, I've gotta pick up Max Kane at the station. Oh, no, you're not. You're coming with me and tell Mother and Dad about oh, us. Oh, let's wait, Kitty, please. Careful, I've already been jilted once today. I warn you, if I don't get this show on Broadway, you'll be jilted again. Hey, Jeff, we gotta talk to you. In private, if you don't mind. Well, I, uh... Oh, well, that's all right. I'll send the station wagon for Mr. Kane. Listen, Jeff, let me tell him. Listen, kid, this girl, Kitty, what about her? Okay, you tell him. Jeff, we've got information that proves rather conclusively that uh, Kitty, that Kitty is a... Uh, uh, okay, Louie. I'll put it a different way. You know who was in her room at 4 o'clock this morning? Oh, that, forget it. Forget, forget it. it? Listen, boys, I've got great news for you. Max Kane, the producer, is coming to see the show tonight, and if he likes it, it goes on Broadway. And Miss Kitty Rand becomes Mrs. Jeffrey Hunter, so keep your fingers crossed. Well, we did our best. Good morning. Good morning. Jeff said that he won't go for the girl unless the show's a hit. Is that right? Of course it's right. It would be terrible if he married the wrong girl. That might nip his whole career right in the bud. So? So? So we got to make sure that the show is a flop. Oh, sabotage, huh? That's the idea, because if Kane doesn't like the show, nobody else will, and Jeff won't go for Kitty. He'll be awfully upset. He'll get over it and write plenty more hit plays. The main thing is to save him from the clutches of that woman. Good idea, even from you. Yeah, but we're going to need some help. Let's call some of the boys. I'll go right to the phone. For the kid's sake, the show is going to be a bust. It's all your fault. How do you do? Mr. Kane, it was so nice of you to come. We didn't know that a big producer like you... Young would... lady, if I didn't respect your father's position in the banking world, and if a producer doesn't know sometime where his next mortgage is coming from, I'd no more come near this show. Oh, but it's a great show, Mr. Kane. You're going to like it. What'll you bet? <laughs> Did you give the boys their assignments? They're set. I don't think I've forgotten a thing. Hey, look at there. We can use him. Oh, I sure. Come here. I sure. I sure. You ring for ice water? Certainly ring for... Never mind that. You see that man down there? Yeah. Get him a good seat. All Way right. down in front. Thank you very much. Oh, here's a little tip for you. A little tip. <laughs> oh, doing a little light reading? Huh? I can get you a much better seat than that. Better light. Come this way. Out there, this is the best seat in the house. Here, here a little tip for you. Boop, boop. 
Full house. <laughs> Sell out. Sweetheart. Gee, thanks, Chick. Ballerina, she ruined my performance. Oh, I don't know why anyone would want to do that. Sir, you have a bust, you have a failure, you have a bust. Assistance. Yes, thank you.
interrupt at this time, ladies and gentlemen, but there's a very urgent call for Mr. Robert T. McChesney. Robert T. McChesney. Go to your home immediately. You have become the father of twins. Robert T. McChesney. <laughs> What am I running for? My name's Miller. Kitty, what's happening? What's going on? I don't know. Come on, girls, give this number every. Say, what's the idea of this? Oh, I'm a coach at that pup. <laughs> I've wanted to talk to the. Never mind. Yeah. With a calm morphine, strolls along the thoroughfare. Mrs. Jones! Mrs. Jones! Mrs. Jones! They pirouette and pose a while, and invite a smile. on the floor. Jeff hasn't overlooked a trick.
there and it goes like that. <laughs> so he wouldn't marry Kitty. Ah, oh, who cares? I'm going to blow you two to bits. Well, we saw Prince Puppy come out of her room at 4 a.m. Well, sure he was in her room, but he was in there with me. You? you? Yes, me. Now, you guys stand back and take your medicine. They ruined our pal. That's what they've done. Jeff will murder us for this. Where are those two baboons? We've got to do a disappearing act. Yeah, but how? Disappearing act? I can help you out. I'm a magician. <laughs> You can make us disappear? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Zip the zipper. I saw it in pictures one time. A great trick. I used to make guinea pigs disappear by the thousands. I often wonder what became of them. <laughs> All you do is this. Look. Like this. Mm -hmm. huh? Something the matter? I'm stuck. You got it all wrong. I saw that picture. You're supposed to zip it down. Like this. <laughs> hey. Hey, wait a minute. I can't get out of this. <laughs> you look better that way. Holy, I can't get back either. Easy, he says. All you gotta do is zip the zipper. Well, you've got me all mixed up. Oh, you've been mixed up since the day you were born. Why, you sawed off little runt. Runt! <laughs> Where are you? <laughs> Someday I'll have to figure a way to get them out of this thing. Have you seen those two imbeciles? Come on out there! Come on down! Where are you? Don't let them in. That's Peppy. He's after us. What do we do? Hi. Hurry. Wait a minute, what are you trying to do? Climb out the window? Well, why don't you make up your mind? Oh, hurry up. This is no time for dancing. Come over here. Get behind me. Quick. Oh, look at him over there. Half man and half nothing. <laughs> What's going on here? Where? Where? Oh, double talk. Who are you looking at, you pasty face Pomeranian? Did you call me pasty face Pomeranian? I certainly did. Yes, I you. Well, we have things to attend to. Let's go. Holy! Come here! Hurry up! Quick! Ah! Let's get out of here before Jeff catches us. Just a minute. Home, James. Hurry and get into your conga clothes. We've got to do something to save this show. Yeah, yeah I know. I know. Halt! About face. Go. Characters. You got us into this now. Get us out. Hurry up. What do you have to do to unzip us? We can't go around dressed like this the rest of our lives. Oh, I never did figure out that part of the trick. I never could make that guinea pig visible. What? You did that to us? Yeah. <laughs> if his spirit leaves him, we're done for. Mr. Jordan. Mr. Jordan. Throw some water in my face. My face here. Not in my face, in his face. Come on, do something. Yeah, unzip us. Well, I'll try. Oh, so the way we go. Lips and I guess let's no, take no, them out. No, 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 did you say we put it over? Oli! Hey, Oli, where are you? Never mind, we're here. What happened? Oh, plenty. Mr. Kane said the show is a soccer rule. Wham! In fact, he says it's good. Oh, brother, where's Jeff? Holy smokes, Jeff. I almost forgot about him. Well, he's probably packed up and back in town by this time. Come on, Oli. We've got to get him fast. <laughs> I don't get it. Maybe 
Imagine that, a talking bear. Max Kane produces the show on Broadway where it's a big hit and Kitty and Jeff live happily ever after. Nice work, Selby. I know you could do it. Talking bears, talking dogs, people who disappear, slapstick comedy. What kind of a script is that? Well, I didn't tell you, but I saw Hell's a Poppin' in New York, and I thought it was very funny. Well, here's what I think of it. Well, you can't hurt me that way. I always wear a bulletproof vest around the studios. Screaming everywhere, she's a maternal. 